You're listening to Run or You Win, Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. As pastor of the Smithton Outpouring and the Kansas City Revival, Steve is a leading voice of revival worldwide. Steve shares his life-changing encounters with God, along with biblical teaching that equips you to experience and lead lasting revival. Come, run with Steve and expect God to revive us now. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another Revive Us Now broadcast, and we're so glad to be together with you and talk about revival. And today, we're going to talk more a little on personal revival. We've been talking about corporate revival, which is my favorite thing, is to see the power of God come into a church or community and just just change everything, and people are being transformed, and people are coming excited about Jesus. But personal revival is, is needed, too, and I've been asked, you know, all over the world, people saying, you know, my church is not going for a revival. They're not changing, and I don't think they're going to change. So how do I get, if, if I don't have a church like that, how do I get personal revival? So I'm going to talk about that, uh, how to get personal revival. And uh, so uh, in, Paul wrote, let's just divide this up a little bit. Paul wrote and said uh, and mentioned spirit, soul, and body. Now, he wasn't talking about revival, but we can do that, spirit, soul, and body. Now, it's impossible for you to divide yourself up like that and say, well, I'm going to go over here in my spirit and stay here in my body. But for study purposes, we can take spirit, soul, and body and realize how we operate as, a, as an individual, as a person. And so if you're a born-again person, then you... Uh, you you know, your spirit's born again, you're hungry for God, your spirit is always ready to go for God. And then of course, we, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, so that's the way you're supposed to operate. The way you're supposed to operate is your spirit is now operating and you're walking by the spirit and the spirit now is sending communication to your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your personality, and on down to your body, and, 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 and everything's responding that way. But what happens is people, they don't feed their spirit, they don't read the Bible, they don't go to church, or, they, or seldom go to church, or they don't pay attention, or just the, the spiritual things are not a priority in their life. And they start drying up, and God seems far away, and they don't hear God, they don't feel God, they, they start losing interest in anything to do with God, including church, or you know, and you go and there's songs being sung. Maybe it's a good church. Maybe it's, there's some people on fire for God. And maybe there's some pretty good preaching going on, but it's just not getting to them, to you maybe, or to them. And what happens is your spirit just begins to starve. And it begins to starve. Now, what, what does that leave? When your spirit begins to starve, well, the spirit then doesn't have uh, the signals to say, hey, 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 hey. Get with it, get with it. The spirit just begins to just, just uh, dry up in, in its operations and just separate and just, and, and I guess we sort of think, well, if the spirit's drying up and the spirit's, uh, you know, uh, starving, then, then uh, it'll just uh, send me a signal or show me a miracle or show me a sign. Well, it does, but it's not the sign that people expect. And so they're waiting for the spirit to do something or send an angel or something. And, uh, but it's not what you expect. See, let me tell you something. The symptom that you're spiritually starved or drying up and needing a revival, whether it be personal or corporate, is shown in your, in your soul. The symptoms of a starving spirit show up in the soul. So uh, I was explaining this to somebody the other day with all this pandemic and COVID stuff. We understand it that if somebody says, I think I have a fever, well, that, that's a symptom. They say, well, maybe you have COVID. Go get a test and see if you have COVID. Now, that didn't mean they have COVID just because they have a fever, but it is a symptom. And then they go get it. Oh, yep, I got it. Well, that was just the symptom of it. And so the soul shows the symptoms of a starving spirit. And so the soul all of a sudden starts not operating by the spirit. And so the mind, will, emotions, personality, the mind starts imagining things that aren't true. 
Starts imagining people think, thinking are thinking stuff about us that aren't true. Starts imagining how people think. Starts imagining that people don't love us. Starts imagining that we're unappreciated. Starts imagining things. Starts imagining how the world is. Starts thinking, my wife doesn't love me. My kids don't appreciate me. Uh, I, I deserve better than this. Just all kinds of thoughts start going off that wouldn't go off if the spirit of the Lord, uh, if, your, if your spirit was in shape and the Holy Spirit was moving in your life, you wouldn't be thinking those things. But now the the mind is going on its own. And, uh, and then the will becomes weak like it was before you even knew Jesus. And it gets, you, you fall into old habits again and old thoughts and, uh, uh, you know, whatever you used to do, you know, and addictions might start coming back into your life or whatever. Uh, and then your emotions, they don't really uh, start getting out of control. They start being in control. In other words, your feelings are everything. Your, your feelings are leading you. I just feel like I'm not appreciated. I just feel like it's not worth it anymore. I just feel like life isn't worth it anymore. I just feel like they don't uh, like me. I just feel, I just feel, I just feel. And so your feelings and your emotions are leading your life rather than faith, the word of God, the spirit of God. And then, of course, uh, and, and then of course your personality puts all that together and you become a difficult person, a critical person, judgmental person, and, and, and it just starts going haywire. Now, this is easy to understand because that's how the world operates. If the, see, the world is not, if the world isn't born again, if your spirit's not born again, then the spirit is not operating. And that leaves the person then with just the operation of the soul and the body. That's it. So we can kind of call it soul power, sort of. That's all you got left. I mean, if, if the spirit's not operating, then you, you, all you have is your mind and your will and your emotions and personality. And so you got to use all those things to survive. And that's why people learn to manipulate and they judge and they get critical and they move all the pieces around and, and they think thoughts and they just, you know, and they're, they're, they're depressed or emotional or angry or whatever. All those things that they're using, that's how they run their lives. But the spiritual person doesn't need to do that. And so Paul said, if we'll walk by the Spirit, we'll not gratify, we'll not need, we'll not walk in the things of the soul or the flesh. And when the, when the, Bible, in the Bible says the flesh, it doesn't mean like this flesh. It means the carnal nature, the nature of the lower nature, the, the soul nature, the feelings, the emotions, and uh, the body, the instincts of the lower, lower person, the lower nature. And so if we'll walk by the Spirit, Paul said, then you'll not, you'll not be gratifying. Those things will not be leading your life. You'll be led by the Spirit. You need to stay in step. He said, Paul said, if, if you'll get in step with the Spirit, right? Walk with the spirit, get in step with the spirit, but people get out of step and, uh, and the spirit then starts starving and, and rather than send off an alarm, the spirit just starts settling down. And all of a sudden you don't feel God. You don't feel like serving God. You don't feel like reading your Bible. You, you don't want to go to church. You don't want to pray all, all these things. All right. And so, and it's, it, those are real things. Then you can say, well, I know I should, I'm supposed to, um, someday I'm going to, but that usually doesn't happen because now your soul and maybe your body too has taken over, which is what you used to do. And it's what everybody else does. See, cause that's all they got. And, uh, I was explaining this to somebody the other day when uh, Adam and Eve, you know, they had the spirit of God on their life when God created the man and the woman in his image and the glory of God, all that stuff was happening. And then when they sinned and they were thrown out of the garden, what they have left? See, the spiritually they died, but all they had to operate on was the soul. And uh, God still worked with them, but their soul power, the power of the soul was all they had. And so that's what happens to people. Then spiritually, they begin to dry up. Spiritually, they begin to falter and starve. And so all you have left is the soul to run your life. But you can change that. You can change your appetite and get back into this. And so I expressed this the other day. I used some examples that, that I did. I was never a coffee drinker till I was in my 30s. And first time I drank it, even in my thirties with Kathy's, my wife, Kathy, she's a big coffee drinker. Her parents were, they all sit around the table and drink coffee, except for me. 
And she wanted to have that in our lives, you know, and I'd, I'd, I'd taste that coffee. And, oh, I thought this is the awfulest thing I ever tasted, you know. But as time went on and uh, got around it, I tried it a little more and try, tried it and tried it. And isn't it amazing? Now I drink coffee every day. I'm not a big coffee drinker like some people, but every day I have a cup of coffee and it tastes fine to me and I kind of look forward to it. What happened? How can you go from something that tastes so awful because it still tastes the same. It's still awful tasting. I just adapted to it. I changed my appetite. My appetite for it changed. And now I look forward to it. And I was using the example, you know, maybe it's not the best one today. Somebody might say he's promoting smoking or something. But some of you did it. You used to smoke or you remember when you were a kid, you tried a cigarette and you lit that thing up and took a puff on it. And what did it feel like? Oh, man, that's the worst thing. You coughed and wheezed and put it down. And then a little later, maybe you tried it again. You coughed and wheezed. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm never going to smoke. That's the most awfulest stinking stuff ever. And then you try it again, and what happened? Now we got people, they get addicted. They start liking it. Now they can't quit. They, that nicotine gets in them, and they got to smoke. They got to smoke. What happened? It's still the stinkingest stuff it ever was, but your appetite. You do something enough times, and you get an appetite for it. So all you got to do, if you've lost your appetite for church and Bible and prayer and all the things of God and you're just drying up and you have nothing left but your emotions and they're going crazy and, and your mind is filled with all kinds of stuff and you can't get to God anymore, you just start changing the appetite. Open your Bible, find a passage, maybe not too long a one, and read it, and read it, read it several times and get to learn. And say, I, I get that now. I know that. Get a subject. Just look up. Look up, uh, go, to your, go to the internet and look up something about what does God say about money or what does God say about marriage or whatever. And just read some of that stuff on, the, on your phone or on your iPad or whatever and learn it and learn it. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you know something. And then say a prayer for your marriage or say, start believing God for your finances. Just do something to get involved and keep doing it. And you'll start having an appetite and you'll go into church and you'll start noticing and offering time comes. You say, you'll start believing God to bless you financially. Just change your appetite by doing something. A number of times you start liking it. You'll start liking it. You'll start liking it. Just like a smoker can start liking that stinking stuff. You can start liking God. You can start liking the things of God. You can change your appetite by feeding your spirit. Then your spirit takes over and starts dictating and guiding your soul and your body until you're a spirit, spirit creature walking by the spirit again. And you've experienced a personal revival. All right. Well, thanks for listening today about personal revival. Until next time, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. Push the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and spread the word on social media. For more episodes and resources, go to reviveusnowpodcast.com. Until next time, keep on running for revival. Revival.